Rice Checks and Wheat Checks, the bite size cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander in Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are approaching a hideout near the Saturn City spaceport where two criminals are plotting a getaway. Ray guns in hand, the Space Patrollers burst through the door. All right, both of you, get your hands up. Hold it, Barris. You heard the commander. Move away from that table, Kent. Move fast. Sure. Now, Corey, this is a blaster. Drop that ray gun. Don't be a fool, Kent. You're through. You haven't got a chance. You fire, so will I. And remember, a blaster is permanent. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Counterfeit Atom. This space patrol is getting kind of late, and I'm getting kind of hungry. Hey, let's take time out for a big bowl full of rice checks. Well, Captain Tito, rice checks. Tops with me. Tops with me, too, space patroller. And it'll be tops with you, gang. Tops three ways. For taste, for size, for get up and go. There's one. And there's one for me. Space Patrollers, when you fill up your old bowls with those neat, triple toasted shredded rice biscuits, you're getting one spoonful after another of the easiest, tastiest, bite-sized eating ever. Because rice checks are tops for taste and size. Tops for get up and go, too. Why, mornings after you finish off a good, nourishing breakfast with rice checks, you're ready to swing into action. If you like whole wheat, try Wheat Checks. It's top two. Yes, look for Rice Checks and Wheat Checks in the red and white checkerboard packages with the picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside. Rice Checks. Wheat Checks. And now today's space patrol adventure, the counterfeit atom. All over the solar system, dealers and collectors of precious stones are alarmed over the mysterious disappearance of several valuable gems. Losses have been reported by jewelers and private collectors on Earth, Mercury, and Mars. The latest victim is the Terra Gem Company. Local agents are completely baffled, so Commander Corey has personally taken over the investigation. With Cadet Happy, Buzz is in the vault of the Terra Gem Company, questioning the manager, Doran Chandre. You're absolutely positive, Mr. Chandre, that those two diamonds are the only... But I almost wish to see that you seem to have to years and left those two stones. They combined earlier to know what I mean you said. You, uh, used the word too. But couldn't the diamonds have been mislaid in such a state? No, no. I placed them in the waste myself last night. Yeah, but there's no sign that the vault was broken into. And you told us that you were here this morning and the time lock opened it. Yes, I know. Of course, they were accustomed to be dealers after handling close to them. We don't mislay stones of that value. Oh, who besides yourself is handled those stones? Several persons. All of complete respectability in the industry. And always within my presence. And except when they're in the vault, the stones are never out of the sun. No. Well, uh, that's not exactly true. I permitted three persons to retain them for a few hours for a private inspection for essential buyers. Yes. Of course, they all returned the guns to me personally. And they were fairly To be sure that no invitations have been switched on? Exactly. I can assure you the real gems went back into the vault. Chandra, I want the names and a complete description of everyone who stood in the in those stones. This case of yours follows the same pattern as the other disappearances. In the absence of clues, I have to start with the men who were interested in those diamonds. No, all right, Commander. If you come into the office, I'll give you all the information. In an expensive suite at the Terra Hotel, a dignified, distinguished-looking man sits under a bright light, examining a large diamond through a magnifying glass. His companion nervously toys with a smaller stone and finally speaks. Let's put them away, Ken. Looking at them isn't going to make them any bigger. This one is truly magnificent, Ferris. What a shame to have to break it up. We'd better get off Terra. Chandray has probably discovered he's been robbed by now. Robbed? All I can be sure of is that his diamonds have vanished. There's nothing to implicate me or you. Now that we're leaving anyway, a jeweler in Jupiter City has some gems in which I'm interested. Yeah. Yes, sir. Somebody in the mind. I was wondering, if this machine of ours, could we make just as much money by using the 
legitimately? Well, I suggest that our operation was illegal. There's no law against using our equipment. There's no one but us knows it exists. So I borrow trouble. Now run along, Ferris. Get our machine aboard our spaceship. I want it ready for use when I reach Jupiter City. Back in Space Patrol headquarters, Buzz and Happy carefully go through all the data available on the strange disappearances of jewels. After hours of checking and cross-checking, the commander points to a little chart. Putting all the cases together, Happy, there are only two factors in our time. Yes, sir. The disappearances have occurred with firms that have advertised an exhibition of a particularly valuable piece of jewelry. A famous collection. Uh-huh. And what's the other? Uh, I've been checking to see if any name occurs more than once in the lists of prospective buyers. Two of the names handed to me appear twice. But another gets taken on Mercury and Mars. Well, that means that some of these men have shown up at more than one jewelry store. Uh, that's must be expected. A wealthy collector out of the hobby is traveling around inspecting the ground. Happy. Here's one name that appears in all the lists. James Kent. Chet has always asked to examine the gems privately. But it's always a thing in the In some cases, other persons handle the jewels after Kent gave them back to the jewelry. Well, maybe someone Kent trusts goes around with them and gets a line in the gems and steals them later. Mm, except that still leaves the mystery of how the gems disappear. Mm-hmm. What do you think to do is have an agent follow Kent and see who hangs around him? There's a very strange thing about Kent. Well, possibly it's either fault or memory on part of the jewelry, but... No two descriptions quite match. Oh, but these jewelers must know that they wouldn't let him take the stone. Oh, and has excellent credentials. He appears to be quite wealthy. He's been staying at the Terra Hotel. He's checking out. He has reservations on a passenger ship to Jupiter City. Jupiter City? Hey, we're due there for an inspection. Mm-hmm. Oh, the actual crook must be a magician. All those jewelers insist the gems were locked in their vaults. So then alert the biggest jewelry firms in Jupiter City to notify Space Patrol headquarters and let out any really valuable articles on the I'm going to install a special detecting device on the vault. All right, Hap, let's clear up this routine so we can blast off the Jupiter. Twenty-four hours later, in one of the finest rooms of the Hotel Jupiter, James Kent and Ferris examine an array of jewels. Interesting assortment, Ferris. However, we will settle for the emerald necklace. That can't, that doesn't make sense. It's going to take a long time to duplicate each one of those stones. The three big movies are worth more. I can bring them out in a half an hour. Yes, but the emeralds are smaller. I can easily dispose of them separately without cutting them. The rupees would be a problem. Mm, it's a shame to let them go. Just take the emeralds, Ferris. Can you finish the job in two hours? Yeah, good. You know, Ken, I wish we could perfect that thing so it would duplicate currency. Then we wouldn't have to go through all this hopeless focus with the jewelry outfits. Currency is too complicated. Plant fiber that's the basis of the paper is organic material. Now, that means the complex molecular structure. Now, those coins came out very well. Not sure, but nobody ever got rich counterfeiting coins. So, right now, gems are our best bets. We can transform energy into minerals and metals. And with a real gem for a model, we can easily turn out exact duplicates atom by atom. It's too bad our imitations don't last. They last long enough for our purpose. Now, you better going for us. I want to get the counterfeit necklace and the real rubies back to the Imperial Jewelry Company before closing time. Late that night, Buzz and Happy are at the Jupiter City Space Patrol Headquarters, preparing a report on an inspection when a call comes from Special Agent Edwards, assigned to duty at the Imperial Jewelry Company. Rushing to the store, they're admitted by Edwards and walk through a dimly lit showroom to a huge vault. Edwards, you're sure no one beside yourself is in the building? No, come I was hiding out in the back room with a portable receiver turned on. Somebody had lit up, so I rested it out. Ball <laughs> door is closed. No, sir. As far as I can tell, it hasn't been tapped. Well, then what made the receiver light up? Something must have happened inside the door. The detective was sensitive enough to register any slight movement or change in temperature. He transmitted the signal to Edward's receiver. Uh, you could open the vault now, Edward. I cut off the master time clock controller headquarters after I got the car. Yeah, it's swinging open. Edwards, do you have a list of the jewels that have been checked out of the store? Yes, sir. I got it from the manager when he closed up. I didn't have been returned. I watched the manager when he took them in the vault. Did you see all the accounts? I said, okay, let's check it over. All the stuff we're in and after the spec is all right there on that page just as you ordered, sir. All right, Edwards, let's take him in. Oh, yeah. Chief Star Sapphire Ranger, huh? 
Ruby. They're the most valuable I think. Don't see Miss Bear here. He had the knife. I didn't see him. He also had it. Want a necklace? A necklace? Should have made it that right away. He had the necklace. Huh. Well, if the emerald necklace is gone, why not the rubies and those other jewels? How uh, do we know for sure that no one entered the bar? He really got a mystery on him. Could the emeralds have just uh, disintegrated? Yeah, I don't think they did. Detective registered their disappearance. Well, the point emeralds this time and diamonds another. And always the jewels that have been out on the table. James Kent is the only person factor in the whole town. I don't see how he could have any more to do with this than you do. Oh, how about that man that called on him at the Hotel Jupiter? Uh, this guy, Ferris. Uh, Ferris seems to work in a shoe shop on Cutler Street. One of our agents chased him here. Well, I've got to start somewhere. Edward, you go to the Hotel Jupiter and get a line on James Kent. Yes, sir. Matthew and I'll drive over to Kepler Street and see if we can find Ferris. In the back part of a darkened machine shop on Kepler Street, Ferris worked swiftly under a dim light, unbolting a small, compact machine from the concrete floor. He is intent upon his work as he hears the back door open. That you can. I'll be finished here in a minute. Then we... What's the idea? Working pretty late, aren't you, Ferris? Uh, sure. Anything wrong with being industrious? Well, that depends on what you're being industrious about. Isn't this an odd time to be removing machinery? Well, this is my machine, and I got a right to be in this shop. Any more questions? Yes. When you heard us come in, you thought it was someone named Kent. James Kent? Hmm? Uh, no, no, Charlie Kent. One of the fellows in the shop. He promised to come back and give me a hand. Uh, by the way, what kind of a machine is that? What does it do? Yes, I'd like to know. Well, it's, it's a small electronic furnace, purified metal. You put the sample in this chamber here. Then you turn on the current, and the induction coil around the chamber produces an intense heat inside the metal. Hey, Commander, look out! Pat, watch Ferris. I'll... Kent. Oh, that's a close call. Let's get this machine out of here before they recover from the ray gun blast. So what if they come out of it before we're finished? In that case, Ferris... Well, this machine shop is a veritable treasure house of fatal accidents. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. This is Vic Tuchel reporting on America's most heavily armed fighter interceptor, the Northrop Air Force Scorpion F-89D. In a moment, we'll hear from the test pilot on this plane, Bob Long, Korean jet ace with a record of six MiGs in six weeks. The primary job of the Scorpion is to protect our country from invading aircraft. Speed more than 600 miles per hour. Weight 20 tons. Now, Bob Love recorded at Edwards Air Force Base. You know, a fella has to be in top condition to test fly a fast aircraft thick as a Scorpion. That's why I always make it a rule. Sleep well and eat well. So, for breakfast, I pick a cereal like Rice Chex or Wheat Chex. They're chock full of energy and really tastes good. You'll like them. Make sure you stay in condition the way Bob Love, Phil Houghton, and other top test pilots do. Every morning, eat a good nourishing breakfast with Rice Chex or Wheat Chex. The cereals that are tops three ways. Tops for taste, for size, and for real get-up-and-go. That's Chex, Rice, or Wheat. Remember, they're tops with America's top pilots. And now back to our space patrol adventure, the counterfeit atoms. James Kent, posing as a legitimate collector of rare gems, has stolen millions of credits worth of jewels from reputable dealers without even revealing his method of operation. Borrowing real gems, he places them in a machine that can duplicate minerals atom by atom by transforming energy into a temporary form of matter. Kent and his accomplice, Ferris, keep the original gems and return the copies, which in a short time revert back to energy. Following a thin lead, Buzz and Happy apprehend Ferris in a machine shop in Jupiter City. But James Kent takes the space patrollers by surprise and renders them unconscious with a ray gun. Right now, as the effects of the ray gun wear off, Buzz and Happy get to their feet. Well, they're gone, sir. And so is that machine. I have no Ferris again, anyway. I never got a good look at Kent. Neither did I. I was fine for a second as he left us, and his fate is in a shadow. Hey, Commander, that machine must tie in with the jewel set. But how? I don't know. Maybe he can't treat the gems with something when he borrows them, and then later he turns on that machine, and radiations make the stones disappear. Well, the question is, did the gems reappear inside the machine? 
sounds fantastic, but... Well, unless Kenton Ferris actually got the jewels, there wouldn't be any point in them making them disappear from the vaults. Oh, there's at least one more possibility. But we'll come into that later. Let's get back to headquarters and send out an alert on Ferris and Kent. The two jewel thieves are now in a private cruiser, outward bound from Jupiter, in a vector calculated to avoid a regular space lane. That experience in the machine shop I'd convince you, Kent. The space patrol and the gem dealers are wise to us. Not necessarily. I still say the jewel you like it is finished. Let's take a shot at duplicating currency. Maybe it'll pass. If you like the job of putting it in circulation, that it might vanish into thin air when you hand it to a sucker. Uh, yes, I see what you mean. Say, I've got it. Here's a gimmick that'll keep us inside the law. We'll duplicate ray guns, brass guns, and other weapons. They're metal. And there'll be a thief turn out by the hundreds. Yes, but they won't be criminals. Besides, we've been making and selling weapons without a license. How does that keep us inside the law? I suppose we sell a coca blaster and a <laughs> Is our customer going to complain to the space patrol? Well, she thinks I have We'll have nothing to worry about. Yeah. Except Corey. If we only got rid of him, then we had a chance back at the machine shop. Are you crazy? Right now, we'd be known murderers instead of suspected jewel thieves. Don't worry. I'll think of a way to get rid of Corey so no one can trace us. Yes, I got Why? Suppose we take a few grains of poison with a mineral base and duplicate it in our machine. We slip it to Corey. It does its work, and then it vanishes. The best doctor in the solar system couldn't find a trace of it. Really? It's the perfect crime. Ah, there's just one drawback. How do we give it to Corey? Just leave that to me. I'll tend to it personally after we get the saddle. Now to figure out a new identity. Yes. As Buzz and Happy prepare to leave Jupiter, a strange spacegram message arrives at Jupiter City headquarters, addressed to the commander. Buzz reads it, and then hands it to Happy. Hmm. Well, do you think this is on the level, sir? Well, the situation being what it is, we have to investigate every lead. But who is this Arnold Block? He calls himself an amateur lapidary. What's that? A lapidary is a man who cuts and polishes precious stones. And he says he can give you information about these mysterious disappearances. Yeah. See here, he says, My connections with gem dealers and collectors and all the planets sometimes bring me in touch with sordid matters that usually are best to ignore. Mm hmm. But from the very livelihood of honest craftsmen is endangered by organized thieves, I must speak out. Even at personal risk. My father only said he's staying at the Hotel Polaris in Saturn City and will give me the details if I need him to. Yeah. Saturn? A long way to go for a bike to eat. We'll be on that train for the next inspection. So it won't be much out of the way to stop at Saturn for a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. We'll see what Arnold Block knows about this. A death as a precaution happened. We've reached Saturn. I want you to put on civilian clothes. While I'm with Block, you sit at another table and keep an eye on things. Hours later, in the large dining room of the Hotel Polaris in Jupiter City, Commander Corey sits at a secluded table with Arnold Block. Anyone who had known James Kent might notice a faint resemblance. But on second glance, he would observe the greater differences in manner, color of hair, and general appearance. As the commander and Block converse over their meal, the dead happy, in civilian clothes, watches unobtrusively from the table across the room. Mr. Block, you say the next job is James on the Apex Fury Company in Venus City. Now, how do you know this business, man? I didn't mean to say the next job. I'm oh, sorry. I should have said it's one of their intended operations. I you know who these men are. Could you identify them? Oh, that would be rather difficult. You see, I was examining some Martian Oak. Man, isn't that the governor of Saturn just getting up from that table over there? Hmm? There's some people in the way just now. Uh... Oh, no. But uh, to get back to our subject, Mr. Blunt. Oh, my. I just noticed the time. Will you excuse me a moment? I have to make a space upon the uh, Important business. I just can't put it out. Of course, the right of hand. It will only take a Mm-hmm. Uh, 
few moments later, Arnold Block returns to the table and Buzz resumes the question. The luncheon over, the commander meets Happy in the street outside the hotel. Arnold Block made a call all the way I couldn't face it. He was in a pay booth and the others were all occupied. I'm afraid that might happen. Don't worry. I'll have the coins removed and examine them for Block's fingerprints. We'll also know the difference of the coin. Well, they were trying to move it. I don't know. It's down also. The automatic recorder has space events on it and help us. Yes, but how are you going to tell which fingerprints are there? What do you think, sir, about Block? I don't know. The information you gave me is pretty general. I don't know what little we know of Kent and Thomas. Hey, how about that milk? You didn't drink any of it, I hope. No. I thought it was a pot of hand and a block of the lake on the table. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, sir. I was spilling in. I managed to slip the glass in my jacket pocket. Doesn't make a very neat ball, either. I'm going to get it to the lab to have it out of there. Later that afternoon, when the office reserved for him at Space Patrol Headquarters in Jupiter City, Commander Corey checks through a stack of identification cards as happy enters. Well, I guess I must have been imagining things, Commander. What's the report from the lab? Negative. There was absolutely nothing in that note, mm-hmm. uh, except no. But still, from where I said it, it looked like Arnold Block deliberately got you to look the other way and drop something in your glass. Well, I guess he was just reaching for the sugar or something. Possibly. Oh, about the phone call. Anything on that one? Yes, I know. In a way, it turned out to be simpler than I expected. The space phone service man had just collected from the coin boxes an hour before, so there weren't very many things to check. But there were no things with Arnold Block's fingerprints. Hmm. Well, he didn't make a call after him. So what was he doing in the booth? Arnold Block made a call. Huh? To Draco City. Space phone sent his automatic reporter to it. It was the only call of that kind made from that particular space phone during the period in Bar. Well, he was a call, too. Did you find out? Uh-huh. They took a legitimate call to the Draco Tool Company. They make gem cutting machines. I'm doing some special work for uh, Mr. Arnold Block. Hmm. And Block must be on the level. Hey, wait. How, how did he make that call without dropping a coin in the slot? He did, Dr. Arnold. Just from the register, they have cut coin. That mechanism is too. Well, yes, sir. But didn't you say there, there wasn't any half cut coin in the machine? Nothing with Block's fingerprints? That's right. Well, I don't get it. I think maybe it'll all clear up when we talk to Mr. Block. I've got an agent watching me. Now have help me check through these records. Almost at the edge of the Saturn City spaceport is a metal fence bearing the sign Saturn Salvage Company. At the rear of a lot, scattered with heaps of rusting metal, is a small shed. Inside the structure, Ferris regulates the controls of a machine, while a man in an ill-fitting suit looks on. It's working fine. I've turned out three dozen since this morning. I'd better knock off for a while, Ferris. Just one more, Kent. Don't call me Kent, even when we're alone. Someday you'll make a slip in public. Sorry, Block. Well, I guess this one is cooked enough. You know, it's hard remembering who you are. Before Kent, it was Drake, and now it's Block. Well, you shouldn't have any trouble. As Block, I don't look anything like Kent, do I? No, you don't. It's amazing what scissors, a hair dye job, and a sloppy suit will do for a man. It's not just in the appearance, Harris. It's here in the mind. I think it's a different personality. I walk differently, move differently. You know? Well, see if you can tell these apart. Two black guns. One's the real thing, and the other one is a duplicate. Oh. They're the same. They're the same. And they look the same. Which is the difference? The one in your left hand. And it's eyes just like a real one, too. After the second, it becomes a ghost and banshee. I can hear the others. Before we try to unload any of these weapons, we've got to know just how long they'll exist as matter. That's what I'm doing now. See those figures on the bench where the guns are? When I pull one of them out of the duplicator, I mark down the time. Uh, we'll set up a real system when we get to Neptune. We'll get a bunch of orders, then unload fast and disappear before our product does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, have you heard anything about Corey? No. He looks fine during lunch. <laughs> you know, those space patrol medics will have a real embarrassing mystery on their hands. What happened to Commander Corus? Yes, and it's talking. I guess we've been outside. Just going out there, we didn't suspect anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as I was saying, the Jupiter Giants don't have a chance against the Pluto Demon. Not with Edmund, you're pitching. And... All right, both of you, get your hands up. Hold it, Ferris. You heard the commander. We're waiting at table, Kent. Let's see those hands in the air. Sure, you have the right man. Can't block whatever it is. Now move out here and move fast. Sure. 
This is a blaster, Corey. Now drop that ray gun. Hope you're a fool, can't you? Through. Yeah? You've got a ray gun. I've got a blaster. If you fire, so will I. We'll both drop. But I'll be able to get up again. He's right, Tony. Well, the cadet's got sense. Now toss those ray guns down and Ferris and I'll be on our way. You're not going anywhere, Tony. Corey, I haven't got time to play games. This is your last chance. I'm going to squeeze the trigger and blast you. Commander, his gun vanished. That's what I was waiting for. <coughs> Keep out of it, Ferris. I... All right, Ken. You want some more, or you want to quit while you're losing? Now get up. Tap our watch and you screwed up those boxes. It's your fault, Ferris. If I'd had a real gun instead of one of those duplicates, then you mean my fault. You were the one... All who... right, cut it out, both of you. Okay, Ferris. Where did I slip up? Was it the disguise is blocked? No. No, I never had a good look at you. Ken, so you got fine. And it was the poison in the milk. You saw me drop it in. No, and it wasn't the gun stealing that finally attacked you either. The thing that made me link block and tent was a simple, everyday space upon called the Draco City. What are you talking about? I made that as block. Yeah. But for a big time crook, you're pretty cheap. You use the disappearing half credit coin. When you dip the company on that space phone call, we, uh, got your number. Ha, 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 ha. An exciting action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Space Patrol, as you all know what sound effects are, you hear them all the time on your radios. But listen to these musical sound effects and see if you can guess what we're doing with Rice Checks and Wheat Checks. Yep, Space Patrollers, that's a big bowl filling up with Rice Checks or Wheat Checks. Man, oh man, it even sounds delicious. It tastes better yet. Those triple oven toasted biscuits are tops for taste. Now we're pouring on the cream. Listen, you can almost hear those crisp, crunchy checks filling up with that cream. And then for the first bite. Wow, what a bite. Size just right. Because checks are made of that modern bite size design. Makes them tops for size. <laughs> Hey, that's you blasting off for a big day of action. After a good nourishing breakfast with checks, the cereal's tops for get up and go. So gang, go get rice checks today. Get wheat checks too. The official bite-sized cereals of the Space Patrol. In the red and white checkerboard package with the picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside. Rice checks, wheat checks. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are walking through a warehouse at the Terra Spaceport where two suspected criminals are standing by the controls of a loading crane. Well, that's Zanker, all right, Commander. Yes, I'm going to get how much of that cargo up there in the crane is stolen. There's probably plenty of it. Uh-oh, he sees it. Well, just a minute, Van Carr. Commander, release that holding brake and drop the load on there. Look out, Hap! Move! Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story... Formula for Prime, when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and then Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Helen Moser. Other players were Bela Kovach, Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks for that exciting action on Space Patrol! <laughs> this program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.